onto linear inequalities. Um, so number five here, show all possible solutions. So this is gonna require graphing. Um, this one's already ready to go, but before I do anything, I want you to see that this one's going to be dotted. Okay, that's a key thing here, don't miss that. Um, so negative three-fifths x plus four, so I'm gonna go up to four, put a dot. From there, I'm gonna go down three, right five, put a dot. It's supposed to be dotted. I'm gonna go ahead and just use my finger here. You can use the dotted tool on GoFormative if you like, but this is fine too. And then it's greater than, so it's gonna be above. So above would be here. That's it, that one's done. Okay, number six, show all possible solutions again. Um, get my annotate going. Before I do anything, I need this to be, uh, first of all, I guess I should say this is gonna be a solid line, equal to solid line, okay? I need to get y by itself though. So I need to subtract two x, So I get negative 6y is greater than or equal to negative 2x plus 12. Divide by negative 6. I get y, but I divide it by a negative, so it's going to flip the sign. Less than or equal to instead of greater than or equal to. 2 and 6 reduces to 1 and 3. Now both negatives cancel, so it's just positive 1 third x minus 2. So I can go down 2, put a dot. Up 1, right 3. I can do that multiple times. Keep going over here. This is a solid line, so I don't have to worry about the dot. And this is less than, so it's below. So it's gonna be here. Okay, you need to graph it based on that sign at the end, not the sign that you start with, okay? The next two are a little bit different. They're, they're together. Brad wants to earn $300 to buy a new TV for his room. He can make $12 per hour working at a certain retail store, and he can earn $20 per hour tutoring. Write a linear inequality to represent this situation. We're gonna let X equal the number of hours working at the retail store, and Y equal the number of hours tutoring. So X is the number of hours at the retail store, and he makes $12 per hour at the retail store. So 12X, and then $20 per hour tutoring, so plus 20, y and then 300. If he's going to buy the TV, he needs that what he makes, which is right here, to be more than or equal to $300. So there's your inequality. Okay, I'm just going to jump right down to number eight and leave that there because um, again, they're connected. Yeah. See what I can do. If Brad works 13 hours at the retail store, write an inequality to show all the possible number of full hours Brad needs to tutor to reach his goal. So 13 hours at the retail store. Retail store is X. So basically what you're doing here is you're taking 12 times 13 plus 20Y. We don't know what Y is yet. And greater than or equal to 300. 12 times 13 is 156. So he's under $156 at the retail store. Subtract 156, you get 20Y is greater than or equal to 144. Divide by 20, you get Y is greater than or equal to, not a good number, right? 7.2. Now, guys, think about this in terms of the problem, okay? Um, 7.2, that doesn't move. Um, 7.2 is not a full number of hours. I need a full number of hours to tutor. It's closer to seven, but in this case, I don't want it to be down to seven because if I put seven hours, that's not gonna be enough money. 20 times seven would be $140 plus 156 at the store. He's short by $4. So I have to take it up to the next number. So it's y is greater than or equal to eight hours. So he go, if he works eight, he's good. 
If he works more than eight, he's still good. But if he works anything less than eight, he did not make enough money. Okay. So that is linear inequalities.